the diet that kills cancer cells. Don't skip this video, please watch till end of the video to understand how this keto diet will lower the risk of cancer by killing the cancer cells. Please don't forget to subscribe the channel and click on like button. Let's watch the video. The keto diet represents a hope in the fight against certain cancers. It works by suppressing the fuel of cancer cells, glucose and glutamine. The ketogenic diet is a low-carbohydrate diet, less than 50 grams per day, very high in fat, with enough protein. It is effective in epilepsy, and could be useful in neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. As cancer cells consume sugar, this diet may also slow cancer, according to some researchers. Here's why. Cancer is caused by mutations that cause cells to grow out of control. But some biologists believe that these mutations don't always lead to disease, and that cancer is linked to both a problem with energy production and genetics. This idea is not new. The dates back to 1920, when Professor Otto Warburg, Nobel Prize winner for physiology 11 years later, described the particular metabolism of cancer cells. Instead of producing energy using oxygen like normal cells, he says, cancer cells prefer fermentation, an anaerobic mechanism, without oxygen. Boston College biology professor Thomas Seifried, a leading proponent of metabolic cancer theory, took Otto Warburg's findings and published a book about it. He explains that an aberrant metabolism can sometimes lead to cancer. Hence the idea of limiting the fuels of cancer cells, glucose and glutamine, to help treatment. Mitochondria, the organelles that produce energy inside each cell, are therefore thought to play an important role in cancer. These theories are also based on work which has shown that the transfer of a cytoplasm from a normal cell to a cancerous cell tends to suppress the cancer. According to Thomas Seifried, if you look at the data, it can be said that there is clear evidence that cancer is a genetic disease since we can inherit mutations associated with an increased risk of cancer, but many of these mutations interfere cellular respiration. And many non-hereditary causes of cancer impair mitochondrial function. The researcher is interested in the potential of dietary approaches to contain the disease, such as the ketogenic diet, which starves cancer cells by depriving them of glucose. This regimen can only come in addition to existing therapies, the idea being to slow down the tumor so that it is vulnerable to lower doses of drugs. The involvement of mitochondria in cancer. Researchers at Emory University, Atlanta, explain that mutations in mitochondrial DNA contribute to prostate cancer. This is because many tumors produce reactive oxygen derivatives and mutations in mitochondrial DNA can increase this reactive oxygen production and contribute to tumor formation. By introducing a mitochondrial DNA mutation into prostate cancer cells, the researchers observed in mice that the mutants gave rise to tumors seven times the size. These tumors also produced more reactive oxygen derivatives. According to the authors, mitochondrial DNA mutations play an important role in prostate cancer. Here is further evidence of the involvement of mitochondria in cancer. Cancer-related mutations and cell metabolism. In a 2016 article, researchers from Memorial Sloan Kettering President also claim that cancer cells have an abnormal metabolism that disrupts the cell cycle. They explain that many genes involved in cancer, oncogenes, have direct effects on metabolism. For example, the AKT and ROS oncogenes increase the consumption of glucose by cells. Other genes associated with cancers, such as MYC and RB, stimulate the uptake of amino acids, such as glutamine. Drugs that are used in other diseases such as metformin, used for diabetes, could therefore also help fight cancer towards an anti-cancer diet? Eating fewer carbohydrates and calories could help prevent and control cancer through the metabolism and increase the effectiveness of conventional treatments. This is the conclusion of Chinese researchers who studied the effects of calorie restriction, the ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting in animals, in an article in the journal PLOS One, in which the scientists carried out a systematic review of 59 studies. Calorie restriction involves reducing total energy consumption without malnutrition, which involves administering vitamin and mineral supplements to prevent deficits. Calorie restriction can prevent tumor formation by limiting metabolism and oxidative damage. 
In this analysis, 90.9% .9 of the studies showed that calorie restriction had an anti-cancer role. The authors also report that a meta-analysis on calorie restriction and breast cancer showed that energy-restricted mice developed 55% fewer breast cancers than controls. With a standard diet rich in carbohydrates, pasta, rice, fruit, sugar, the body feeds on glucose for energy. When the ketogenic diet is adopted, the body can no longer generate energy from glucose because the carbohydrate intake is reduced. Ketones. New sources of energy for the body. The liver then begins to produce ketones, which bodies are generated by burning lipids. The body then uses ketones for energy, which is called ketosis. The body then increases the satiety hormone, leptin, and lowers the hunger hormone, ghrelin. Patients then lose weight because they are not as hungry as before and absorb fewer calories. In general, the ketogenic diet used for weight loss recommends getting 75% of calories from fat, 15-30% of calories from protein, and 5-10% of calories from carbohydrates. The ketogenic diet against cancer. However, when the ketogenic diet is used therapeutically to treat cancer, the proportion of fat is higher, on the order of 90% of calories from fat, with a lower protein intake, 5 to 10%. Indeed, cancer cells are also able to feed on proteins, so it is recommended to lower your protein intake in this case. Eskimos and the ketogenic diet. Scientists have long wondered how Eskimos managed to survive all winter on such a low-carbohydrate diet under such extreme conditions. In fact, the low-carb diet of Eskimos changes their metabolism so that their bodies burn fat instead of glucose for energy. Thus, Eskimos are in a state of ketosis during the winter, which allows them to hold out. Ketosis is a very beneficial coping mechanism that the human body has developed during times when food was scarce and uncertain, in hunter-gatherers, for example. The existing data on the role of the ketogenic diet in cancer. There is some evidence that ketone bodies can slow cancer growth, and allow cancer cells to die. See the 2014 Shukla Gebrejiwargis study which shows this. A study undertaken by researchers Daniela D. Weber and Barbara Koffler attempts to demonstrate a correlation between the ketogenic diet and shrinking tumor size. How the ketogenic diet can starve cancer cells. The ketogenic diet uses the Warburg effect to ensure its effectiveness against cancer. The Warburg effect corresponds to the observation that cancer cells produce energy through a high rate of glycolysis, the system that converts glucose into pyruvate, which releases energy. Thus, the goal in prescribing a high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet in cancer therapy is to reduce circulating blood glucose levels and enable ketosis. As a result, cancer cells are starved for energy, there is no more glucose for them, and struggle to grow while normal cells adjust their metabolism by using ketones as an energy source. This is called metabolic treatment for cancer. It is a simple and non-toxic treatment. By reducing blood sugar, the levels of insulins, responsible for the proliferation of cancer, drop. Insulin is usually secreted to lower blood sugar, to be used by cells for energy. Reduction, increase in size of cancer tumors. The researchers then provided solid evidence concerning the positive impact of the ketogenic diet on the reduction in the size of tumors, on several types of cancers, prostate cancer, colon cancer, lung cancer, breast cancer, breast and glioblastoma. While for other types of cancer, such as astrocytoma and medulloblastoma, brain tumors, the ketogenic diet is of little or no value. In the case of kidney cancer, the ketogenic diet even has negative effects and increased tumor size, according to two studies. Only one study shows the value of the ketogenic diet to treat stomach cancer and liver cancer. The end message to remember. However, it is important to remember that current research is still scarce. You should never avoid conventional cancer treatments in favor of an alternative like the ketogenic diet. Your best bet is to follow your doctor's advice. The medical treatments available are very effective in combating common types of cancer. That being said, the ketogenic diet might be a good choice as an adjunct therapy, meaning it is used in addition to conventional treatments. Therefore, you probably have nothing to lose by trying it out if you are interested. Just make sure to see your doctor first.
Hey don't forget to subscribe our channel. Hit the like button. Thank you.